Hey guys, just want to do a quick review of Citizen Kane. I just watched this today. And uh, there's going to be spoilers and uh, just some brief thoughts on this film. And this film is often hailed as one of the greatest of all time on a lot of lists. It used to always be number one. And so it definitely had my curiosity. And I want to say that I'm glad that there's all that hype for this movie because I wouldn't have checked it out otherwise, and it is a really good movie. Um, and see, even on the back of it, it says, Many Agree is the greatest of all time. The greatest film of all time. I don't know a lot about the actors or the director or anything. I did read or watch a YouTube video that was explaining why this film is so great. This film was made in 1941, I think, or in the 1940s anyway, which is a long time ago, and this film was way ahead of its time the way that it was recorded, the story and everything, and a lot of films have imitated it since then. This film is all in black and white, which I love uh, a lot of black and white films, and this is another one to add to the list. I guess the director was only 25 years old, Orson Welles, when he made this, which is pretty phenomenal. And basically, the story is of this man, Charles Kane, and you see him uh, at the beginning, we see him basically on his deathbed and he utters the word rosebud and then he has like this snow globe in his hand and he drops it and it shatters and we go to a part where it shows kind of the news headlines and it's kind of going over his life of his success because this guy's like a millionaire and uh, his successes and his downfalls and his businesses and his relationships leading up to his death and then uh, they cut and they say you know this isn't what we want to put out for the news we want to know you know who this uh, Charles Kane was not just what he did and then so we go to flashbacks in the past and they start going around uh, these journalists go around and investigate uh, various people in his life and ask him questions about him they try to find out who this rosebud was or what it was um, that he, you know, his famous last words, Rosebud. And so we, we find out about this man, and basically, you know, he was, his, his parents uh, found out, you know, they were gonna be rich and leave him this fortune, and he basically moved away as a child to, to live with someone to watch over him. And so he was kind of away from his parents, you know, his whole life, he got taken away from his parents, and I don't know all the details about the story, you know, I'll have to rewatch it again multiple times, but I'm just kind of going off of what I thought or what I can remember. Anyways, he wants to start, he wants to have like a newspaper business. He doesn't want to have like a gold business or whatever business is they're running or... He wants to start a newspaper, so he takes over the this Inquirer newspaper, basically like buys it out and... Uh, he, he turns it into a, a popular business, I guess. He meets a woman and uh, they get married. He wants he, w he ends up wanting to run for governor. Uh, he finds another woman. He cheats on his wife and he becomes in love with this other woman. And um, he ends up getting married to her and he loses when he's running for governor. And you know everything kind of turns to crap for him. And but this new woman that he's interested in that he gets married to, she can sing or she thinks that she can sing and he likes her voice and he wants to make her into a famous singer. He buys an opera house for her to be there. And Anyway, she's a really horrible singer and everybody rejects her and uh, he wants to push her anyway. And, you know, she doesn't want to do it anymore. They get rejected and he basically buys this palace where he goes to live in this palace with her by himself. So she ends up leaving him, and then like the last scenes of the movie, he like destroys her bedroom, he destroys everything in it, and goes crazy, and, and then we see the rosebud thing, and we find out in the end what the rosebud stands for. But, like I said, this film is in black and white, a lot of shots are really beautiful. There's a lot of superimposing, like putting images on top of other images, which creates some surreal effects, and so, you know, I'm a really big fan of surreal movies, and I wouldn't say this is a surreal film, but there are surreal moments, and, uh, you know, there's one in particular where, uh, I guess, they talk about 
his divorce, his second or you know his second wife leaving him, and we kind of see that. And the guy who is being interviewed, you know, he mentions, you know, I remember that day, and we see it again. And then there's like this bird that's like, Wah! like it shows the the film, the footage again. There's like a bird like superimposed onto it. it kind of startles you, and it's like, why did they do that? But it was uh, it was pretty cool. Um, like at the beginning, I think when he has the globe and he drops it, there's like snow like superimposed over him. You see it kind of like snow falling. And I guess this film was very innovative, way ahead of its time. It had close-up shots and, and the superimposing thing hadn't been done a lot before, I guess. And the story, how the story is kind of like a puzzle and uh, they're trying to figure out like who this guy was and you know why he did the things he, wa he did. Um, so I know I've jumped all over the place, but another one of the movies that was hailed as one of the greatest of all time was Tokyo Story, and I watched that, and I feel like that movie impacted me a lot more. But this movie did have some effects on me, and there was one scene in particular that kind of struck me was when he has this friend who was supposed to be his friend throughout his life, and they worked in the paper together. And see when he was running for governor he was married to his first wife and then he was going to be exposed for cheating on her with this other woman and that's kind of what ruined his campaign I think and so he failed as the governor he didn't get elected and his friend basically comes in drunk and tells him you know kind of tells him that he's selfish he always only thought about himself and stuff like that and it kind of kind of struck me while I was watching it I kind of feel like you're in his shoes and kind of find out that this guy was pretty selfish but then then again maybe he kind of had like a crappy life maybe that's kind of what would come from you know all the circumstances in his life um you know being alone and being away from his parents and stuff you know so i mentioned him losing as the governor and he had this newspaper and he he liked the idea that he could control what people think like through the newspaper and at first he says that he wants to have a newspaper with integrity and honesty and he makes this declaration and uh, his friend actually keeps the original copy of this declaration that he makes because he thinks that it's going to be something valuable in the future like the declaration of independence or whatever but after you know he fails running for governor they had they had two copies of the newspaper they were going to print one was saying that he won he was elected and the other said that the polls were rigged basically and they're like let's go with the polls being rigged because he lost so I thought that was funny. There is lots of bits of humor in this movie. Another thing was, with his first marriage, we see a montage, which I guess the montage, um, you know, doing kind of like a time lapse, showing their relationship deteriorating over time. I guess that was kind of innovative uh, ahead of time too. But uh, you know, she she's always bickering about how he's never around and he always wants to be working at the newspaper or whatever. But there's one part in the montage where she says, um, Charles, really, uh, the people will think, and then he interrupts her, and he interrupts her, and he says, what I want them to think. So she's like, the people will think, and he's like, what I want them to think, and I thought that was funny. But that's how he was, and um, these shots of this palace, they, he called it Xandu, Xanadu, or something like that, and um, it was... The palace is ridiculously huge, like this huge staircase, this huge fireplace and everything. And, and uh, while they're there, they're like so lonely, like his wife is so lonely and she's playing, um, like she's putting together puzzles the whole time and, you know, she wants to, to be around people and do things. And uh, she's, and they interview her and uh, she's kind of a wreck at this time in the future. and. She says that he always, you know, wanted to control everything in his life, but he couldn't control, you know, when she left him. And uh, anyways, in the end, we find out that Rosebud was his childhood sled or his sleigh. And uh, in the beginning, when we see him as a child, he's playing with it and he's playing outside having fun before he uh, is told that he has to go to Chicago away from his parents. And so I get the feeling that this means, you know, that was like the only time that he really had joy in his life, like back when he was a child playing on that sled. But there's a lot in this movie that, you know, makes me want to rewatch it and dig into it more. The way that it's filmed, the actors. I don't remember a whole lot of music being 
a big deal except for you know the bad singing from her <laughs> and that's really funny too I talked about the humor because there's a lot of scenes where he buys this like professional uh, musician to uh, train her and she's never getting it and then the, and the, the teacher's like you know you're one of those people that's never gonna learn whatever and Kane gets mad at him and <laughs> it's uh and so I realized where this clapping gif came from you know Orson after she has a performance he stands up and he just starts clapping like really hard and you see that a lot in forums and posts this black and white picture of this guy just clapping and you know he stands up and he's clapping he's clapping louder than anybody there and uh, he's like a madman like he was just driven to you know get what he wanted and uh, <laughs> but so that's cool that that's where that came from so I understand that now so you know as I'm talking about it, I really do love this movie would I say it's the greatest of all time of mine I would say that it's very significant for the time that it was made and it's a really good movie and it, it definitely deserves a spot in like the top 100 movies that you should see you know before you die or whatever I would definitely say that it's always subjective you know what the best movie ever is I always say personally that my favorite movie of all time is Sling Blade by Billy Bob Thornton and that's a lot way different movie and I really love surreal movies and weird stuff by David Lynch and all that that's always at the top of my list but Sling Blade, for some reason, that speaks to me a lot. It's a very emotional movie. It's very dark and depressing with little glimmers of hope in there. But, you know, and the acting is, is superb by Billy Bob Thornton and everybody. Dwight Yoakam. I love Sling Blade. <laughs> so maybe if there was, if I was going to say, my, you know, I'd just, I'd just say my favorite, my personal favorite of all time is Sling Blade. And there's a lot of other movies. And I, it's also a movie that I think a lot of people can enjoy, um, Sling Blade, but also Citizen Kane. I think a lot of people, if you sat down and watched it, you'd enjoy Citizen Kane. It's like, some people might be like, I don't want to watch a movie from the 1940s, you know, but this movie is way ahead of its time, and it's definitely worth a watch. You know, as far as the, the greatest of all time, you know, with Tokyo Story being one of the possible ones, I might put it over that, I don't know, but it's it's up there, and I still need to watch City of God, and Lawrence of Arabia, and Chinatown, and all these other movies that are considered the greatest movies of all time. But Citizen Kane was always one of the top ones. I guess one of the ones that dethroned it that I haven't watched yet either is Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. So I really need to watch Vertigo. But uh, so much more can be said. It's entertaining. It uh, has moments that make you think. You feel sorry for Cain, but you also see that he's kind of a selfish monster. You laugh a lot. Um, the visuals are amazing and stick with you. I mean, I'll be thinking about this movie after watching it, you know, for a while. It's going to stick with me. So. That's all I'm going to say, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. Definitely check this out sometime, Citizen Kane. It is a great movie. And so, God bless, guys. Till next time.